now I'll be going with the cervicogenic headache. Amongst the different kinds of headache, cervicogenic headache is one of the very important for the pain physicians because here, this is one kind of headache where the definitive role of your interventional pain management is there. And that is the reason cervicogenic headache is too important for us to make a diagnosis. And many a times, neurologists refer these patients to us for the intervention. So, cervicogenic headache. So, this is the page where you can go ahead and you can give the detail. And basically, my slides are, and this page, a lot of topics are there from that page. So, what is cervicogenic headache? Cervicogenic headache, each part is important. It is chronic. Chronic means more than three months. It is unilateral. Very rarely it is bilateral. It is dull. It's not sharp shooting. It's not lancinating pain. So chronic, unilateral, dull headache. That is what is cervicogenic. It is commonly associated with the ipsilateral shoulder and the arm pain. So neck pain, headache, and shoulder and the arm pain. Restricted range of movement of the neck. Again, this is a very key point. It is classified under the secondary headache by the International Headache Society. And what exactly is the cervicogenic headache? So pathology is in the neck and presence present with headache. That is what is cervicogenic. So epidemiology. It is more common in 30s. It is equal in male and female. And if you are taking all headaches, one to four percent of all headaches are cervicogenic headache. For us in a pain clinic, you know, because we see these kind of headaches more often, so incidence might be more in any pain clinic. But if we are talking about the general population, it's about one to four percent, then it is not, you know, quite high. Now, these are the different types of cervicogenic headache. So, three different types occipital. Occipital means the pain is located in the occipital area. Second is supraorbital. So, only in this supraorbital area. And third is Occipital temporal maxillary. That means it start from the occipital area, then in the temporal area, and also in the maxillary area. And fourth is all these three types means here, 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 and here. All these areas, the uh, patient might be having the pain. So the other types. Let me repeat. It can be only occipital. It can be occipital temporal maxillary, or it can be supraorbital. These are the areas where the pain might be there. So why it happens? So the predisposing factors, one is occupational headache, occupational hazard. So it is more seen in the hairstylist, carpenters, drivers, where they are basically, you know, uh, putting the head in a, some awkward posture for the longer time. And they are more prone to develop this kind of. So it's a kind of occupational headache in some patients. Some strenuous activity, like weightlifting in the sports persons, and forward head posture. You know, in you know, sometimes you know, on the computer, long time you are sitting like this, and some again. Remember, it is more prone to develop in the persons where the head is aped in an awkward position for a long time. They are prone to develop this cervicogenic headache. Now, if you are looking about the detail about the which structures in the neck are responsible for the uh, this cervicogenic headache, the most common one is your fasciculus. So when you are keeping the head in a particular, you know, upward position for the long time, suppose I'm tilting this side, so that this side, right side, the facet joint is overloaded for the longer time, and that can be, and day after day, so that can be a source of pain. Neck muscles, myofascial pain of the neck, again, because of the awkward posture for the long time. Sometimes it can be the occipital nerve, occipital neuralgia, occipital nerve can be impinged. So that can be also be categorized in a type of, Though it is more commonly called as occipital neuralgia, but sometimes it is also classified within the, uh, the cervicogenic headache. Atlanta occipital joint sometimes is loaded and having the, uh, you know, the pain from source coming from that. And intervertebral disc, if there is a you know, discogenic, though it is less common in the cervical area than in the back pain, but sometimes the uh, disc degeneration in the cervical area can cause the discogenic neck pain. And that can also cause the cervicogenic headache. So pathological process, what kind of pathological process can you know, predispose this anatomical structure into a pain generator? One is your trauma. Whiplash injury is one of the common, which can the facet joint, jagophyphyseal joints or 
passive joint is the source of the pain. Inflammatory conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, which can cause the you know the passive joint arthropathies or atlantic occipital joint uh, inflammatory arthritis. Degenerative conditions, it can be cervical disc disease or the facet joints, and rarely the malignant conditions, neoplastic conditions, which can also be responsible for this pathological process. Pathophysiology, why there is headache in the neck pathology. So, very important is the trigeminal nerve rootlets, so which is supplying the, you know, the face and the head areas. They go down till the C3 nerve roots in the, in the spinal cord. That means there is a overlapping between the C1, C2, C3 nerve roots and the trigeminal nerve rootlets. So there can be pain in this originating from the neck. They can be referred into the area which is supplied by the trigeminal nerves. So this is the one of the important hypotheses that why the neck structure pathology can present with the headache. So the history, again, as we discussed you know, uh, at the beginning, that it is normally unilateral, one-sided headache. Other side headache might be there, but you know it's there. The it starting from the neck, it radiates to the you know the eyes in the temporal area, in the ear area, intermittent pain, and gradually, gradually over the period of time, it becomes continuous. It's normally the dialect, mild to moderate in intensity, but sometimes it can be very severe. I can remember one of our you know. The uh, on the senior, senior nursing staff, he was having very terrible, you know, neck pain radiating to the uh, to the head, very bad headache, unilateral headache, very very intense headache. It was coming and sometimes reduced, sometimes it is coming in the episodes, and he was having okay, I must have the brain tumor, and he came to us. He was telling and Dr. Das, I am thinking I am having a very bad problem. I am having very bad headache. And it is always unilateral, starting from the neck and the occipital area, radiating towards the eyes. And uh, we thought of subarachnoid headache. And the medication was not really helpful. And ultimately, we did the interventions. We did the medial branch block, and ultimately, pain was completely resolved. No further episodes. So, as I was telling you at the beginning, that uh, the subarachnoid headache is one of the conditions where the pain physicians is very important role. The role of the interventional pain management is very important in this group of patients. Associated feature pain might be having the ipsilateral shoulder and the arm pain. This is very common, and uh, you know the sometimes there might be the features of the eyes or ear. You know, subacogenic headache can sometimes present with something in the um, sounds in the ear. These kind of things are also there. Sometimes there is a you know the dizziness is also there. Swelling of the eyes, feeling of the swelling of the eyes. The aggravating factors, abnormal posture of the neck. This is very, very important. When the neck movement causes the pain, aggravates the pain. That is very important. And sometimes coughing, sneezing, weight lifting. Relieving factor, sometimes your uh, the NSAIDs. And very important, which is again diagnostic, is your local anesthetic blockade of the selective nerve root or the structure which is being supplied by the nerve, like medial branch block in the facet joint. That is the relieving factor. That is the diagnostic. So physical examination, so we might be getting the local tenderness, we might be getting the trigger points over the muscles, we might be having the you know, weakness of the muscles of the neck, there might be atrophy of the mu muscles, and this test is very important. Flexion, rotation test. This is a specific test for the subarachnoid neck. So what will be asked here? So the patient will be asked to touch the, you know, the chin towards your neck. And ask the patient then, after making this, ask the patient to rotate right side and left side. So normally, what is the normal range? Normal range is about 45 degrees. Means after doing this, one should be able to rotate it up to 45, 45 degrees in this side, 45 degrees this side. If it is reduced by 10 degrees, so that is your significant. So the flexion rotation test is one of the tests which should be done in the when you are suspecting the uh, subarachnoid headache. And if it is positive, you should be suspecting the subarachnoid headache. So now this is very important. Unless a patient is fulfilling this diagnostic criteria, you should not, you must not stamp is at subarachnoid headache. So what are these? So fulfilling criteria C, that is very important. We will be coming to the C later on. But what is important is clinical, laboratory, and or imaging evidence of a disorder or lesion within the cervical spine or soft tissue in the neck known to be or generally considered as the, accepted as the valid cause of the headache. 
so pathology in the neck and that is known to cause the headache so this is on very important but at least two of the following must be there to stamp is as a fibrogenic headache what are that that the headache has developed at the same time to the neck pathology like say for example somebody was having a car accident so there was a whiplash injury of the neck and headache started from that day or after one or two days headache significantly improved or resolved when you are treating the neck pathology suppose somebody is having the myofascial pain you have treated the myofascial pain with somehow with some measures and your pain is also reduced then cervical range of movement i already told you how to do that flexion and rotation range of movement is reduced by more than 10 degree and headache is abolished following the diagnostic blockage of the cervical structures or nerve supplying to that it is not always nerve root it is a it's a nerve supplying that structure is important so out of these four two must be there to make a diagnosis of cervicogenic headache and last but not the least that it cannot be must not be explained by other international headache society diagnostic criteria so others should also be ruled out but again this four is very important one or two must be present so you can let me repeat this four quickly we have to remember this four one is onset of headache matches with the onset of the neck pathology second the diminution of the pain matches with the diminution of the neck pathology third that range of movement is reduced at least by 10 degree and fourth if you have done a diagnostic block and your headache is also resolved out of these four two must be there to make a diagnosis of cervicogenic headache and last but not the least that there is no other things which can be in the diagnosis so what should be the differential diagnosis let me tell you what are the differential diagnosis unilateral headache what should be coming in the first in the mind is your migraine so migraine should be you know ruled out so there is not enough cervicogenic headache can be sometimes continuous but sometimes it is you know the episode so the one very common things to be ruled out is your uh, the the your migraine sometimes tension headache also particularly when the cervicogenic headache is bilateral though bilateral is very rare but again the sometimes the uh, both side pain but one side predominant that can be a presentation for the cervicogenic headache also for the tension type headache so the tension type headache and the migraine should be excluded in this patient of cervicogenic headache management physical therapy like you know if a trigger point is there trigger point neutralizations neck muscle exercises psychological interventions particularly if somebody is having the headache for a long time chronic headache there is always some amount of the depression that should be taken care medical pain management you have to give some analgesics you have to give basal relaxants and last very important is your interventional pain management as i told that the diagnostic block is having very valuable you know the role in making a diagnosis and at the same time the the treatment also therapeutic interventional pain management is also important to treat this kind of patients and what are the therapeutic interventions it can be occipital nerve block it can be medial branch block for the facet joint it can be trigger point injection it can be so the other things you know cervical epidural injections particularly to this discogenic pain trigger point injection botox injection for the myofascial pain selective nerve root injections pulse radio frequency can do sometimes radio frequency neuralysis for the facet joints cryoablation of the facet joints should be the list of the interventions which you can do for the cervicogenic so thank you very much and if you have any question regarding the cervicogenic headache you have your question sir any questions